Coverage of the 2011 Combine Performance Clinic is brought to you by Canola Watch. Free, unbiased, timely, and research focused. Hi, I'm Jay Wetter with the Canola Council of Canada, and I'm at the Combine Clinic in Westlock, Alberta. And with me is Les Hill, who's the Manager of Technical Services and Business Development for PAMI in Humboldt, Saskatchewan. And we're going to be talking about eight quick tips to control combine loss. Tip number one, Les. Feed canola as uniformly as possible into the combine. That's uh, the starting point because everything starts with how you feed the combine. If you can feed it a very uniform uh, feed rate, you're going to reduce a lot of the problems that you come into uh, in adjusting. Uh, if you get a break in that windrow or in your feeding, you're going to start to pulse feed the machine and that's going to make it difficult to adjust. Tip number two. Avoid overthreshing. Canola is, uh, when it is dry and ready to harvest, is often very brittle and uh, well matured. It's going to break up easily, so you can easily push most of the material down onto your cleaning system and overload the cleaning system, which is usually the biggest problem. Tip three don't assume canola separates easily. As canola, we all know that it threshes easy and they're little round berries so they should fall out nicely but they can get trapped in chaff and material carrying through the separator and be thrown over and it's important that uh, operators check that to make sure that they are getting good separation. And the next ones are tips four and five together and it's about the initial settings part of your presentation. You talk about the fan, the chaffer, Yes, what I uh, and tell the producers to do is to do their initial settings by setting safe. That means that when they're setting the concave is to pull it up to the tighter uh, setting suggested in the operator's manual to run the cylinder or the rotor to the faster speed that's suggested and then in the cleaning shoe to run the chaffer as open as the largest setting they recommend. Same thing with the cleaning sieve, open as much as possible. The tailings uh, section usually in the mid range and then the shoe uh, for the fan setting they should be running maybe mid range or they can use a, a technique that I found has worked quite well. And that technique is to start into a, a windrow and just drive at about one mile an hour just so they're putting a steady even feed of material on and then keep increasing the fan speed till they start blowing a few kernels out. Uh, what we're concerned about there is trying to get the velocity of the air to the point where it's just carrying seeds all the way to the end. Okay. Which leads us to number six, which is measure the actual loss out the back of each combine. Right. It's very important because canola being black seed and when it lands on the ground mixed in with the dirt and chaff and that is very, very hard to distinguish. So simply looking on the ground will give you a very poor uh, estimate of what is actually going out. So we've developed uh, some systems uh, for measurement. One of the first things is to be able to catch the, the loss coming out. And we recommend that you use some sort of catch pan. Uh, that can be a one square foot pan of any uh, shape really, but it's the area that's critical. Or you can go to a larger pan that is several square feet so long as you know the area of that pan. The trick then is to get it underneath the combine uh, before uh, anything drops on the ground and then have the chopper and the spreaders disengaged and out of the way so that it drops directly into the, the pans. Then you've caught a representative sample. When you get that sample you need to clean it and there's a few different ways that you can do that. You can do it by hand or if you have screens or use uh, any type of air device such as a um, little blower for blowing up uh, air mattresses or things like that. Or in bigger samples you can actually use a leaf blower and a big Tupperware tub. The idea is to get rid of the chaff and straw and get down to the last clean uh, kernels that are in there. You usually find that it looks a lot more than what you thought you had then you need to measure it. And there's four real ways of trying to get a measurement on it. One is to actually weigh it, and uh, the other is to volumetric measure it, but you need a calibrated uh, measuring device for that. And 
you could count kernels, but that's pretty time consuming. And finally, there's just a, a representative area uh, that we would look at. And uh, I've developed a, a seed loss guide that is available on the uh, Canola Council website. And it'll show you all of those and lead you through. It's got the instructions to lead through. The most common is that people will be just going by a comparative area. And you can roll them into the corner of a little pan. If you get a three by three inch triangle, that's about one bushel an acre. More commonly, what we're saying is to get down to a half a bushel an acre, you would have two little puddles of canola about the size each of a toonie. Can we go back just for a sec? You, you mentioned the importance of dropping the pan rather than following along behind with the pan on a stick. What's That's the right. benefit of dropping? That's right. The, the idea behind dropping is it is the consistency. You always have the same. As the machine passes over, you get a representative sample that is all the same length of uh, time. It's how much lands on the ground. If you, for example, are using a shovel and going alongside and you stick it under, your timing is imprecise, so you might be catching for one second, one time, two seconds, another, and that difference in time may obscure any difference in the change in loss that you've made through setting. Number seven, travel at speeds that match a level of acceptable loss. Once you get your initial settings and start trying to fine tune, what you're going to do is keep increasing your feed rate and checking your loss. When you get into that, you have to decide where that loss changes enough that it goes from acceptable to unacceptable. And there's no sense pushing it beyond that. Uh, if you go beyond, you're going to start losing a lot of canola, and that can be very costly. And it seems like it can go from acceptable to unacceptable fairly quickly. That's correct, because what's happening, the majority of the loss is typically coming over the cleaning system. And when the cleaning system starts to fail in a particular area, all your seed's going that way. So it's suddenly got a, a real large source and it can dump and go from very low to very high very quickly. Number eight, machinery losses should be less than 2%. I would recommend even lower than that. 2% uh, would be an absolute maximum. 1% uh, is probably uh, more realistic, and I think the target should maybe even be a half a percent. We're getting down there. So, you know, that's still going to maximize the amount of return you're going to get out of growing it. When you start getting up into the higher levels, sudden changes will push it even higher. So if you're running at 2%, which might be a bushel an acre, a slight change in feed rate or performance on your combine, and you might be losing two and three bushels. So that's why I go for the lower when it gives you more of a safety factor, as well as saving you money. Good. Thanks, Les. You're welcome. That was Les Hill, Manager of Technical Services and Business Development for PAMI in Humboldt, Saskatchewan. At the Canola Council of Canada Combine Clinic in Westlock, Alberta, I'm Jay Wetter.